Hey everybody, it's Kim Walker here with the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast. Very excited to be here with you today, but I'm missing someone. My husband, Brian, our co-host, he is not with me today because guess what? Every now and then he'll do his own podcast episode and I'll do my own. So that's what's happening today. And I'm here to talk to you about attracting college students. Now, before you say, "Mm, not for me, then let me please um, just kind of fill you in that I want you to stick around because you might be surprised to hear a little bit of what I have to say. So with that being said, let me first say a big thank you to our friends at RepairPal for providing you with this episode. RepairPal's certified network of shops is trusted by millions of customers each month. Learn more at repairpal.com forward slash shops. All right, so let's get down to it. Here's what happened. My dear friend, Lucas Underwood, who owns LNN Automotive over in Boone, North Carolina, he reached out to me um, a couple of weeks ago to talk about college students, because if you know him and his shop, then you know that he's right there with what? App State. Appalachian State is right there. So why would he not consider those college students when he can build a relationship with them and be their choice for automotive repair for the next couple of years, um, two to four years or so? And so... We were talking about that. He wanted to do a direct mail piece to the college students. That is underway. Um, He's working with a direct mail company to get that taken care of. And um, he's sending 6,500 pieces that were designed specifically for college students. He's putting a little, um, little card on there that gives them actually a free oil change every other oil change. They pay for one and the next one is free and he's building that relationship with them. And so the thing about college students is a lot of them, you know, some of them don't have vehicles. Maybe they're just riding their bikes here on campus, but a lot of them are coming to college with vehicles that are not brand new and they are going to need maintenance and repair, but also their parents are helping them. So not only is it the student that you're working with, but um, even if those college student parents live in another state, you're still developing a relationship potentially with those parents because sometimes the student may want you to talk to the parents, the parents may be taking care of the payment, whatever it might be. And so if you can get the parents trusting you, then those students are going to trust you as well. And so I started thinking about that whole thing about attracting college students. And I thought, you know, I bet there are other people who have that same question. I myself, we, Brian and I, we live in Hammond, Louisiana. Well, when I say Louisiana, everyone thinks automatically that we are LSU Tiger fans. And I was born and raised here. And so by nature, by default, sure, I care about LSU, but truthfully, In our town of Hammond, we have a college here, Southeastern Louisiana University, which are the Lions. And I am a double alum of Southeastern, SLU. And here in our town, when college is in session, our population practically doubles because we get an extra 15, 16,000 students in town, and we are a commuter college. So there are a lot of students who are commuting here from Baton Rouge, from LSU, I mean, not LSU, from, from New Orleans, and even from what we call the North Shore, which is um, east of us, east of Hammond over here on Interstate 12. So I totally get the whole college student thing. And so with that being said, I really started thinking. I got with my team. I did some research. And ultimately, I have a great outline for not only a blog, but definitely this podcast that I'm doing. And potentially, I'd love to hear from y'all what you think about this for those who are interested, a class that I can teach at one of the conferences. So with that being said, I want to dig in and talk to you. I have some different segments 
specifically about attracting college students, a guide to help shops who are in college towns. So I'm going to talk to you about some audience research, um, what college students appreciate. We're going to go over some ideas for um, either special offers. And I know that lots of shop owners, including us, are not big, huge fans of coupons and special offers, but I do believe that sometimes there is a place for that. And so if it fits you, great. If not, carry on. So we're going to talk about some ideas for engaging with the college student crowd, how to stay in touch, and then just some what I like to call lanyap. Down here in Louisiana, lanyap, lanyap just means something a little extra. So let's dig in a little bit. Audience research. When you think about the college student, a lot of them, like I was saying earlier, may be commuters. However, I can't help but think that in Lucas's situation with App State, a lot of them are not necessarily commuters. They're probably living in the dorm or an apartment or something like that. They're in his area. So first of all, just think about the students in your particular university, the one that you are targeting. What about those students do you know? What do you not know? Because if you don't, you may want to consider sending a survey to those, somehow reaching out to those students, whether it's through organizations on campus or um, finding, I mean, it could be, I've literally seen where there were ads that were being done inviting people to take surveys for an opportunity to win a gift card to Amazon or whatever it might be. So finding your own way, you could potentially work with the Chamber of Commerce maybe, um, especially there are departments on campus that could potentially help with that and the small business administration right there in your area, especially if you have a college, they probably have an SBA attached to it. So let's try to find out your particular college students what they like, what their expectations are in a service provider, what they dislike, what drives them crazy, what drives them and motivates them, what excites them. So find that out. And some potential types of questions obviously would be demographic information, their age, their home state, maybe finding out where they come from. Um, it might be interesting to learn what their major is, their course of study, any special clubs or organizations that they might be in. I'm going to talk to you about how to connect with those in a little bit. Even finding out what year, make, and model they are driving, and then have them rate on a scale how confident um, they might be in having someone to maintain their vehicle, kind of finding out, do you already have a local mechanic, a local repair shop to, that you trust? Even asking them questions about what they may know or may not know when it comes to automotives, you know, asking, do you know how to change your tires? Do you, um, as I said, do you have that local repair shop that you already trust? Even asking them, um, how they would go about searching for an automotive repair shop that could potentially help you know where to put your message. Are they going to do a Google search? Are they looking at maybe the college message board? Are they going to ask their parents? Are they going to ask their professors or um, maybe the sponsor of the organization or the Greek organization they might be affiliated with? So Find out some things like that that will help you. If you're asking the question, you want to at least have a plan for what you would do with those answers that you're getting. So really do some research about your audience and um, use that information to help you. Oftentimes, as I was mentioning earlier, it's the parents who are paying for the car care or advising them. So promoting that it's easy for parents to pay is something important. The text to pay, paying over the phone, maybe through a, a link that gets emailed or texted. So think about the things that are going to make life easier for that college student and or their parent who may or may not be advising them in their automotive maintenance or repairs. So once you have a good understanding of the actual audience, then it's important to understand as you're moving forward with developing your message or knowing where you're going to put your message that you know what they appreciate. So 
college students are students. They're there to learn. So any type of way that you can teach them, whether it's through a car care clinic or hosting an event on campus, but teaching them a lot of the basics of car care. I'm not going to get on a rant. However, I am going to say that it's alarming to me, and I'm sure you as well, how many young people leave home. They don't know how to do their laundry. They definitely don't know how to replace a tire on their car. Um, They may not have any idea how to check their oil or a whole list of things. So you become this guide to them when they're away from home and they are at the university learning to be independent. So anything that you can do in the way of teaching these college students how to care for their vehicle is going to very likely go a long way with them. That could even be done on, say, an Instagram video or reel where you're breaking down car care into a series and you're making it short and simple and you're talking to them. I, I'm not necess- I'm not really telling you to put this stuff on Facebook if you're trying to attract the college student. A lot of them are just not there. So that's why I specifically was saying Instagram. If you're bold enough to get on Snapchat, that's something to consider as well. Think about, you know, the fact that college students hopefully are trying to be careful with their money. Um, Maybe they don't have a lot, so they're having to make things go farther, such as gas mileage, right? Gas prices are constantly up and down and up and down. So anything that you can do to give them tips for extending the life of their gas mileage, that's going to be something very helpful to them. And having that conversation of how well do you know your car? The other thing that they appreciate, college students, I happen to know because I have one, is food, treats, um, coffee maybe. So my son's not big into coffee, um, but he sure loves food. And so anything that you can do to engage the college students and maybe offer however that might go, um, food, coffee, treats, maybe you host a QA and a or a um, mechanic talk or tech talk or whatever you want to do at the coffee shop where You know, you could say that you're going to offer free coffee and snacks to the first 10 people that show up. And now you're sitting down, having a conversation, talking to 10 college students. So take these ideas, brainstorm, let them become your own. I'm just throwing them out there to maybe plant a seed so that you can take it and grow that seed. Find a way to give back, right? Young people are very... um, charitable and they love to feel like they're a part of something bigger. And so if you can find a way to give back, there's usually um, a food pantry at um, each university. I know that there is one here at our university and we have done a food drive before with certain groups of people to supply food to the food pantry. So you could maybe dig into that, find out if the local university has a food pantry. You could run a food drive through your shop where you're donating to the food pantry and getting some possibly good press um, or some just positive vibes out in the community for taking care of those college students. Obviously, showing school pride and um, being involved in the school community, the, the university community there, I I can't help but imagine the ways that Lucas Underwood is involved in App State right there. So really using your social media to, um, to highlight positive things that are happening at the university is always going to be a good positive feeling for those college students. Any way to help them save money. And then for sure, I can't believe that I forgot this. It was one of my team members that put this in this outline right here. So I'm just so grateful. I think it was Loretta who who put this in here. Um, Maybe Danny. I don't remember. But one of my team members put this here, which is don't forget to promote that you have loaner cars if you have loaner cars or that you offer a service where you're 
um, picking up the vehicle or dropping it off. That could be really huge for college students. If they're dropping their vehicle off to you, you're shuttling them back to, to the university, um, or providing a loaner card. Those, those are things that could really go over very well with that audience, college students. So here's some special offers, some ideas, um, just kind of continuing what we were just talking about. Some of that is a little bit of an overlap, but the whole knowing their community, how about partnering with the chamber or a local BNI chapter or a complimentary business in your community and hosting something, whether it's online and you're sharing it digitally through social media or you're hosting an actual in-person event, but something to help the college students become familiar and get to know their local community. There may be things that only locals know, and you really want these students to know it. Maybe you host it at um, the popular local pizza joint or coffee shop, like I was saying earlier. And maybe it's a series where you're bringing in different people, different businesses in the community to ask questions or to answer questions that the college students might have. So being the resource and helping connect those college students to their local community could be something that's really great for you to host or sponsor or somehow be involved in. So like I was saying, be the resource, connect them, point them in the right direction. So speaking of Lucas Underwood, replace his name with whatever your name might be, but a just ask Lucas a series where maybe, you know, through the questions on stories on Instagram, you spend certain days of the week asking college students to submit their questions, and then you are asking, uh, answering those questions for them. So I called it a just ask Lucas, but it could be just ask whatever it might be. Um, so what Lucas is doing, as I may have mentioned earlier on the direct mail piece is an app state oil change club. And so you can take and mold this into what fits for you, for your shop, for your community, um, what's going to make sense for you. But what he's doing is, um, buy an oil change, get an oil change free. And the purpose of that is building that relationship with those students to get them in and really solidify the relationship and create some loyalty so that those students are with him throughout the entire time that they're at that, um, at App State. So the other thing is I have shared this in our classes before. And so if you, um, if you haven't seen this, then I want you to listen closely because there is a great app. Shout out to our friend, Chris Cotton, who is a coach. He's the one that told me about this. When I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, how do I not know about that? But it's to have the app, Hi Hello, downloaded onto your phone. And what you're doing, I'm going to show you mine here in just a second, is you're creating your digital your digital business card. And so it would be really great to create a digital business card that when the students are in your shop, they are basically scanning a QR code and it adds your contact, your digital business card directly into the contacts of their phone. That way, when they are busy at school and something happens with their vehicle, they're not having to Google, they're not having to search. They are, they know that you're already in their, um, in their contacts. So be, be thoughtful about how you put your contact together because they may forget the name of your shop. So for example, with Lucas, he would definitely put L and N automotive in there, but you also want to put in the, in the info card there words that, you know, that student's going to be searching, right? Auto repair shop, mechanic, technician, things like that. And so for those who may see this on video, um, I'm going to hold this up and I hope that you can see it. So this is my digital business card. And with this digital business card, for those who are seeing this, there is a QR code that brings people here. And then all they need to do is they're going to scroll to the bottom and it's going to say, it's not showing because this is just the demo. It's going to say, add to contacts. And you're going to, you're going to add they're going to pull this up on their phone. They're going to click add to contacts and it's very simple in there. So check out hi, hello. And when you do that, 
be sure that you have those conversations with those students and, and add that. There's also a link. So if you're using um, a CRM that allows you to text with your customers, you can send them a link following up saying, hey, click this link and add our shop contact to your contacts on your phone. So that's something really great that college students would probably really appreciate. So the other thing is, you know, reaching out to them um, through a mass message and having them text and maybe you are giving a giving them a free coffee and you could just do that occasionally as some way to wrap that into um, a, a campaign to get them more familiar with you. We talked about seminars, workshops, free classes of some kind. So working that in and then even considering a social media maybe campaign that's a what if series where you're going over typical issues that may come up with regards to automotive repair or maintenance. So what if my battery dies? What if my oil light comes on? What does a check engine light mean? What would, how do I know if it's time to change my oil or, you know, just coming up with a whole series of what if questions and having that what if campaign where you're answering, answering questions, you are essentially positioning yourself as the the professional, the expert on this in your community. And that is going to give them a sense of peace, a sense of calm, security, and trust because you're helping them, as we love to say, get to know, like, and trust you, which is essentially going to bring them in to your shop. So finally, we're going to talk about staying in touch. Obviously, texting is big. And so we don't want to leave that out. If your CRM is offering that, you absolutely want to text with those customers. Um, consider the clubs that are involved at that local university. I can only speak to um, our university, Southeastern, that's right here. Just from being in the community, I know the clubs, the Greek organizations, the the organ the um, the clubs that are very busy, very involved here at our university. So you need to learn which ones are popular at your university. Um, maybe not spending time on the, the organizations, the clubs that are super, super small, but really putting your time into the ones that are very active and involved. So find out what those are, the Greek organizations, any clubs that are related to specific um departments, for example. I was in, in college to be a teacher, so we had an education club that um, was specifically focused on people who were going to be teachers. But there's also religious organizations, the BCM. My son is involved in the BCM. At West Point, he's actually going on a, um, a mission trip to Puerto Rico for Thanksgiving. So find the clubs and the organizations at your local university that you can get involved with and say, hey, we'd like to sponsor a pizza night or we'd like to provide coffee one morning or you know, just get to know those clubs and organizations as a way to kind of get your foot in the door, support them, help them, and get your name out there. Okay, we talked about the QR code um, earlier with Hi Hello. So that's something you want to just have that ready when needed. And that allows them to not have to do research or ask anyone, but they just know that you are in their phone. And then look at the other life events or activities that are happening regularly at your university. Here at Southeastern, we have something, so bear with me. We're in Louisiana. We do things a little differently here, but something called gumbo yaya. So we have gumbo in Louisiana, and they host gumbo yaya once um, once a semester. Actually, I think once a year. I believe that's actually in the fall. Obviously, it's gumbo. But find those regular events like homecoming or um, move in weekend. I know that our church has historically been super involved in the weekend where students are moving in. And so um, our church would send a team of people to um, help with move-in. And so if you either 
you decide who that might be, whether you're paying your team. Um, if you have some members of your team who are very giving with their time and they love college students or something like that is literally maybe get some t-shirts for your shop and show up on move in day to offer your services. You might want to reach out to the housing department at your university to say, Hey, we'd like to be an extra set of hands. And so find a way to serve that community. So that could be an event that you might want to even just be involved in is that particular weekend. So I want to wrap up with some lanyap as, um, as again, that's what we call something a little extra down here in Louisiana. So pay attention to Instagram for the students. Facebook would be more about reaching the parents of the students. Um, consider like Lucas is doing direct mail to the university. Um, and so when I say that he is actually, um, working with the direct mail company to, um, they've already reached out to the post office and um, there's 6,500 students there who are going to receive this. And so they were able to talk to the post office there and develop that system for getting the direct mail piece there to the university. And, you know, they worked out all the logistics and what that would look like. And, you know, he's putting something specific so that those direct mail pieces, when they're put in the mailboxes for the students there on campus, it's very clear that that was created for them. Um, so that company, I believe, if I remember correctly, is Mail Shark. just in case. I just don't want to overlook, um, but that is who's helping Lucas with that. So I talked about also just kind of recapping, sponsoring a pizza night or a coffee morning, or even don't forget about the apartment complexes there in your college town that um, maybe there's an apartment complex that's just full of university students reach out to that apartment complex about maybe hosting a pool party, or maybe you're not even necessarily the one there that's hosting it, but you're sponsoring it and you're supplying um, the food or some snacks or whatever it might be. So just find how that fits for you. Some people have a different level of involvement that would be comfortable. So just find what works for you. And um, those are some good ways to get your name in front of those college students. Don't forget about the, so we talked about Greek organizations, but the sororities where you could host maybe a ladies auto clinic. Um, I know that there is, I can't remember the name of the company. It's a shop that does like a spa night sort of thing where they bring in people who are doing pedicures or manicures or chair massages and they're hosting a ladies um, automotive clinic. Don't really necessarily want to do the popular ones that involve wine because those college students, a lot of them are underage. So that would definitely not be the right way to go, but just find something that would work um, as far as hosting a ladies or a college night for the ladies um, to get to know more about vehicle and automotive care. So I am going to drop some links in the show notes of this podcast episode to point you in um, some good direction for more research with regard to um, attracting the college crowd. And I would love for you to email me at, um, we have two email addresses. So one is podcast at shopmarketingpros.com. If you have an idea for adding to this podcast. I can add it to my blog or the class when I teach it. Or if you just have something you want to mention as it relates to um, attracting college students, I'd love to hear from you. So email me at podcast at shopmarketingpros.com. If you have a question, a marketing question that you would like for us to answer, whether that's in our private Facebook group. If you're not there, please join us at um, the Auto Repair Marketing Mastermind Facebook group. Um, we'll answer it in that group. But depending on the question, if there's enough um, answer, then we can record an actual podcast to answer that question for you. So you can email podcast or you can email ask at shopmarketingpros.com, send your question, and we will be sure to answer that for you. 
So I hope that this has opened the eyes of some people to be able to um, better just think about attracting the college student. So before you immediately say that's not the right audience for me, I just wanted to share some information to maybe expand or challenge you on that thinking and determine if it really is an audience that you do or do not want to try to attract. If you do want to attract it, I hope that this has been helpful for you. So with all of that being said, I just want to thank you again for listening to the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast on the Aftermarket Radio Network. There are some other great shows on the network, and you can find them all at Aftermarket Radio Network or on your favorite podcast listening app like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, and many others. So tune in next week for another episode of the Auto Repair Marketing um, Podcast. Until then go fill those bays.